Oh, fucking red lights on. You guys are recording, aren't you? Son of a bitch. So I'm Tyler Crawford, uh, the owner of TWC Mechanical, and behind me is my 2019 Ford F550, powered by a 6.7 liter Power Stroke turbo diesel engine with a fucking transmission that does gears and things. So I'm going to give you guys a truck tour, I think, maybe. I'm a fucking tool junkie, guys, and you're about to see it today. Bullets free, and all it does is bend the head and keeps the gear intact. That's quality. That way you don't have to work the next day. It's a win-win situation. You get a day off work, and you don't have to worry about paying your bills no more because you're dead. Just lots and lots and lots of debt and tears. No lube in these toolboxes. <laughs> this video is sponsored by Fortis HD. Reach out, FortisHD.com. See what we can do for you. This is called the service body. It's supposed to hose all my hopes and dreams. Doesn't do a very good job at that. So in drawer number one, there's a lot of shit. Up top are all my electric impacts, drills, ratchets. No, no drills, I broke that and it's off for warranty. So anyways, I stopped at the half inch. I, I had the Milwaukee three quarter. It was impressive, but the problem with the three quarter inch Milwaukee is the batteries never really lasted long enough for it to be impressive. So I prefer the air because Air does a lot better things. Up top, yeah, like I said, all my electric stuff, batteries, paper towel to clean myself up after I get excited with jobs and things. Hand cleaners to get the really sticky messes off. Down below is all the chargers. I haven't really organized a truck lately because I've been busy and I don't really care about it. It just makes it look like I'm busy even though I do nothing throughout the day because I'm always clean apparently. Um, on the other side, I've got an inverter that obviously ran off the truck batteries, which is awesome because there's no switch in the cab. So at night, I forget to turn it off and I wake up to a tr dead truck a lot. More times than I want to admit to. Three times last week. <laughs> I'm not fucking joking either. <laughs> it was three times. Said I didn't even fucking turn it off every morning. I just jump started the truck and went to work and then, yeah, go home and forget about it. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, those are all the batteries, the chargers, my flashlights. Because as much as the work lights are great at night, they don't really get into the engine bay where you're working, so you have to have light, because I like to see what I'm about to up. Up top is my hammers. I have uh, multiple sizes, because depending on what you want to fuck up, you want to be precise, or just f***ing send it. There's also a really big sledgehammer in the back, too, which is awesome for destroying ECMs and such. Nine times out of ten, it's a good thing. Got all my picks and mini screwdrivers here, and then my four-way angle wrenches. I really like the snap-on four-way angle wrenches, because... They are a true four-way. A lot of the four-way angle wrenches you guys get, if you look at here, your wrench will come up and this is a different angle than this, right? You get your Sun-X brand or like your Mac Tools or Mac Core, whatever like that. This angle and this angle are the same. So when you, sometimes when you're using a wrench, you will get it on and you really fight with getting the, onto the nut or the bolt or whatever. Snap-on it is a true four-way angle. So when you take it from this side and flip it to this side, your angle changes, right? So one, two, three, four, four different angles. Awesome for working on hydraulic lines in tight areas, like pump compartments, back of the booms, because there's other hoses like that. These are really handy for that. Now, there is an individual that you guys have on here a lot. I'm not gonna drop his name out, camera up, uh, whatever his last name is. Don't know his last name. I call him Cam Blue Tech. It's legit saved in my phone. I'll show you that later. But <laughs> he said, uh, quote unquote. I just have all standards. Instead of having metric equivalents, and I have twice as many, I don't really need that many. I don't like to have metric and standard because the sizes are kind of the same. I'm a fucking tool junkie, guys, and you're about to see it today. I have metric and I have standard. I also have a big fucking precision calibrated crescent wrench to do the metric stuff because I haven't bought the big metric wrenches yet. But moving on down, I got my uh, handy dandy snap on screwdriver, pry bar, and punch and chisels. I say chisels and punches because the Phillips ones work really good for punches. This is your chisel and your pry bar. And if your snap-on dealer says it's not, look at them and tell them, we're asking, we're on the screwdriver, it says that. It's just got a picture. Doesn't specify words. I need to read, because I like to be smart. So anyways, mini pry bars, scrapers, junk like that. And then the trusty vice grips when you really want to get that hard to reach ingrown hair out of your skin. You guys have probably seen these on the old uh, snap-on tool channels, they're new. They call them beetle, they, I don't know what they call them. I call them beetle pliers because they used a beetle to describe these. They're actually quite impressive for wanting to pull out ingrown hairs. Or if you want, I've seen lots of guys get famous on TikTok because they use it to pick up coins. Now, 
Truth behind that story, it doesn't pick up coins in Canada because our coins don't have a sharp shoulder. It's rounded. Ironically, it won't pick up a rounded corner. The f***ing Americans got all those views, the bastards. All right, so moving on. Wire strippers, crimpers, torch. Back probes, stuff like that. That's on this side. My uh, multimeters, because you got to have them. Got to be fancy ones. Multimeter. That can check resistance, too. And how you check that, it lights on fire. And then my Allen keys, metric, standard, and Torx. Bigger ones are currently not on the truck. I don't know where they are. I left them on a job somewhere, so I'm going to replace those. And now we're getting down to the wrenches. Standard on this side. Regular length, long length, ratcheting, and stubbier in here. And on this side is my uh, metric. And I was showing the guys earlier. I'll show you again here. This is not just a crescent wrench. It is not just an adjustable wrench. This is called a multi-tool. Now, this is precision calibrated, so don't use it as a hammer. On this side, you have your standard, right? See all them markings, lines and stuff? You know how you guys read a tape measure? Small line, big line? Yeah, same thing. You got like two small lines? I don't know what that means. Then on this side, it's metric, precision calibrated. See how it's curved here? It's a heel bar. See how it's kind of curved here and there's some weight on it? It's also a f***ing hammer. And Snap-on's very kind to give you multiple different size hammers. Different weights for different things. Like I said, when you want to be precision, you use a small one. When you want to just destroy dist dist shit, you grab the big one. So, moving on, 3 8 sockets with multiple different length ratchets and so on and so forth. Everyone's going to look and be like, man, you got a lot of sockets. I have an addiction. We well, already covered that, guys. If I see it and I like it, I buy it. So, I've got my impact, shallow and deep, my chrome, shallow and deep, my swivel, shallow and deep, my 12 point, shallow and deep. Like, gotta have it all, boys. And then my metric Allen keys, again, and then you get into my metric, same thing. Long Allen keys, my ball Allen keys, metric standard, so on and so forth, all that cool stuff. And then we move on to the half inch drawer. Now in this drawer, I don't have assortment of hammers. It is just two different length hammers. And the reason why you also have to have multiples of these guys is when you break one, you have to have a backup because I love to shit and tell the snap-on guy the funny story afterwards. So same thing, uh, impact, chrome, 12 point, six point, shallow, deep, semi-deep. It's all in here, Allen keys, a plethora of different size sockets above one inch, 32 mil. Yeah, just lots and lots and lots of debt and tears no lube in these toolboxes. <laughs> so going on down, then I get into my electric air tool drawer. I've got my um, air hammer, um, sander, air, uh, electric Milwaukee sander, air impact, die grinders, blowers, tire inflation gauge, because guys, I drive a Ford, the tires leak air. I buy high quality stuff to take care of my my customers all the time no i've got airbags in the truck and for whatever reason the driver's side because it's not very heavy over time eventually bleeds the air out of the system and i gotta give it a little top up once in a while with the air compressor on the truck and then honestly i seen cam have this in his video and i thought man he actually likes it i hated mine it's a pile of it is good for the purpose of it's very small and gets into tight to reach places where a five inch grinder won't because I don't carry a ton of air tools on here, guys. At the end of the day, you gotta realize where you're gonna cut it off. You have a truck that only can have so much room on it. You still have to have room for parts and seals and so on and so forth. So you gotta draw the line of where you get it at. This is quite handy for its intended purpose. Don't know what Milwaukee intends it for. I find new purposes for a lot of my tools. Um, I haven't pulled the guard off yet because I haven't found a big enough wheel to fit on it that still fits in the arbor. And you can only go so big before you cut your fingers and it hurts. Done that a few times. Um, and then I've got my high horsepower, one horse, three quarter horse, one horse, mill, or snap on, air die grinder, extendable reach. Super awesome for when your line board guy misses his ID and it shrinks the bushings too much and your pin doesn't fit. So you put the big old flapper wheel on there to resize the bushings to its manufactured spec. It's a science. If it fits, it ships. So there's that drawer. And now we're gonna get to the really expensive drawer. All my big one inch wrenches, all my big four way wrenches, the new latest and greatest big 
56 ounce snap on hammer. Guys, this thing is so awkward and bulky to wield one hand. It's kind of shitty. And then for one you don't really want to destroy, shit, you hit it with the soft face dead blow. And then I got my pry bars, heel bars, so on and so forth, all in there. Again, Cam says you can do the same metric job with a standard wrench. I've got metric in there too. Not very big, it stops at 36 mil. And then, uh, you guys have seen this in some of my videos on TikTok. My snap-on rip got tired of warrantying the small pry bar, so he gave me this big one. And said, here you go. And then, I thought it was a birthday gift. No, he made me pay for it. So anyways, I use this for pulling the tracks together. You guys seen the video of me doing that. Throw it in there, you wrap your sling around it, you choke the track back together, and you slide the pin in when it's really... So, that's that drawer. Go to the next one. In here, I have the uh, Fat Guy Cooler 2000, the Milwaukee portable fan that you put a battery into. It does a very good job in the summertime when it's 43 degrees out. That's Celsius, not Fahrenheit for you American bald eagle lovers. So, and my one inch uh, Blue Point Impact, that thing hits like a racehorse. And I know how hard a horse can hit because I've been kicked by one and they fing hurt. My three quarter snap on air gun, the uh, lubricant that they're supposed to go on the impacts that I don't use. I've had those for four years. Then in the top drawer here, I have all my torque adapters, uh, weatherhead sockets, crow's foot, flare nut wrenches, so on and so forth. At the front and the back are all my larger crow's feet for my half inch wrenches, ratchets, especially Cummins fuel line sockets, engine barring tools, and so on and so forth at the back. Now I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm not in this pack enough. We're gonna learn together what I have in these drawers because I forget a lot. I'm literally, you go back to your toolbox after working in the thing for 33 years and you're going for your wrench drawer and you open up the wrong drawer. It takes you six times to get back to your wrench drawer. Yeah, that's how this cabinet is. I'm the same in this cabinet, that cabinet, and the other cabinets. It's like, oh yeah, I need a half inch ratchet. I'm digging through my welding cabinet. It's like, what the f am I doing? So in here, I have my Walton tap extractors, which you need to have these if you're gonna be a retail and a tap on an impact because apparently you're not supposed to do that. It's supposed to be done by hand. You, you, goddamn YouTube experts. These are pretty handy. So they work pretty sick. You've got your four flutes or your four fingers for your tap. So slide it out, get it onto your tap, slide your uh, collar down, put your precision calibrated multi-tool on the back here, your crescent wrench, wind your tap out. Never have to be afraid of a broken tap with these. Extracted numerous broken taps with them. They work sick. Uh, impact driver, and then screwdriver bits for your impact. When you're taking apart dash panels, you want to be quick, and when you're assembling it back together, you want to be quick too, so you strip the head of the screw off real fast. Down in this drawer, I've got my uh, stud pullers, metric standard, e-torx, uh, tack gun, roll pin punches. <laughs> Don't waste your time buying these things, guys. These are the large tap holders. There's an individual on YouTube and TikTok called, uh, I'm not gonna name his name. But anyways, he loves these things. They don't hold the large taps, They're like an in-between size. They don't fit. So 12 point socket, electrical tape, and an impact. That's the way you send a tap. I don't know remember what Matt was. He used to run a line boring business in Abbotsford. He's the one that showed me this. I watched a fucking lathe. Put a half inch adapter into his lathe with a socket and a tap. 12 point socket. So if his tap catched in the piece he was turning in the lathe, the socket would just rip the teeth and spin. The if the tap was binding up. So I was like, oh, that's cool. I asked him, Matt, why do you do that? And he goes, well, I'd rather have a safety. Just, I've just done it enough, I learned. So after seeing Matt do that, I bought some high quality, super expensive snap-on tap sockets called 12-point chrome sockets. And you've seen in my numerous videos that I've used them to tap on undercarriages. They do work well, they do get kicked, but at the end of the day, it's saving you time. And ironically, the, the socket's still warranty, so who shit? You go give it back to your dealer, he looks at you and goes, well, what the fuck was this for? And you laugh and say, oh, I used it to tap out 48 holes on one undercarriage and it kind of got I used the shallow to finish their side. Well, that's not warranty. Uh, yeah, the tool's worn out. Worn out is warranty, called lifetime warranty. That's why I bought Snap-on. Down in this drawer is all my hopes and dreams crushers because this is for extracting broken bolts. Easy outs, square, spiral, large, small, brass punches. And then my uh, dentist die grinders with the mini burrs. Really good for wanting to die grind out exhaust studs, um, turbo flange bolts, because you don't want to dig a big, you know, eighth inch or quarter inch die grinding bit. Because you guys know when you're using these and it decides to get all catawampus and start spinning around the bore, 
When you're trying to do fine work, these are slick. When you're doing fine work with the bigger die grinders, gets up real fast in a hurry. So I've got the straight and the 90. The 90 has bailed me out numerous times working in tight to reach spots because on the machines, everything's tight. Unlike your old lady. And then going on down, we got our big one inch sockets. I had to check because like you said again, guys, I don't know what's in these drawers 99.99% of the time. It's always a surprise for me too. It's like, oh, hey, cool, I got that. I didn't know I had that. Again, I got such a tool addiction, I buy shit, and it's usually in doubles or triples. So then that's the one inch going down the one drawers to my three quarter and one inch, three quarter 12 point chromies. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, at one point, Dayquip was doing the recessed uh, cutting edge bolts and they kind of messed up on their OD. You couldn't fit a socket in there properly. So when it burred over, it kind of turned into lathe and machined your socket to fit perfectly, except it was the wrong size. So I just sat there spinning. And then going on down another drawer, again, more three quarter inch sockets, uh, drill bits, cause you know, drill bits, drills over here, drill bits have to be here. Gotta be close and within reach. They should be on the other side of the truck cause I like walking. Seeing the trick on TikTok of installing brake spring hardware is on the semi trucks with a chain. And I thought there's no, no way will that work. So I tried it out and holy shit, guys, it does work. It's actually pretty slick. Way better than the old way of smashing your fingers and cursing and screaming and swearing and questioning your sanity and why you chose to be a fucking mechanic. And then down in this very last drawer are all my actual precision calibrated devices, micrometers, vernier caliper, and telescoping gauge set for when you want to measure the ID of a hole. Don't do it to your girlfriend. She will not appreciate it. Can factually tell you for fucking free. So, moving on back to the uh, number three cabinet. So, there's a story of why I have the uh, manly pink streamers hanging off this thing. You'll get, you'll see the, the damage of the story on the other side. When this door is open, you look in your mirrors. You don't see the fucking door. Doorways are only 12 feet wide. This wing sticks out three feet off your truck. I ripped the passenger side door off two times. Manly pink streamers, I'll take them all day long versus driving around with the door missing and the cabinet falling out with all the in it. That was sick that day. So yeah, if you got one of these skull wing doors, guys, manly pink streamers, save your lots. So bolt extractors, more extractors. Um, there are those shitty small spiral screw extractor style. They say they work sick. I think it's anything below quarter inch, you will break or I will break. And then extracting tool steel out of a broken project, project is even more fun. So I eventually learned after numerous, hey, I think it'll work this time events to stop using them on small stuff because die grinding out tool steel is just not fun really isn't can tell you that for free so then we got our long torx bits and then i got my ratchet screwdriver bits which are great because you can take those and put it into your drill because if you need to go fast drills are the way to go because you can turn the torque setting up and down and speed on them I learned that after stripping out some dash screws and then i got a light duty slide hammer kit some fuses for troubleshooting because if you're blowing a fuse you don't want to find the problem you want to just keep putting in fuses until you eventually find the problem. So you gotta have lots and lots of fuses. That will help you troubleshoot. That's how you become a good mechanic. So moving on, I don't know what that is because I didn't mark it. So I might have to pull that out. I don't know what that is because I didn't mark it. So I'll have to pull that out. Oh, Torx bits. Don't buy the Mac ones. They break and you can't insert bits into them. The snap on ones when you snap the tip off, they just pound the, the bit out and put a new bit in. And then behind, oh yeah, <laughs> I know what these are. These are those fancy Mac RB, RBRT, rounded bit removal tool. It's SAE and metric, and it says it's for Allen key, and you can see how the head's kind of designed a bit differently. They do really bite in, and the, the shit video on YouTube and TikTok, it is true, they do work. Um, but this also works in Torx, too. You just smash it in there with a hammer. It'll fit. It's coming out either one way or another, because you've probably stripped it out, so who cares how you get it out? You just want to get it out. So I bought this set, thinking it was a joke. 
Um, no, they work really well because I stripped out a lot of those T45 or 40 cap peanut cover stupid button head screws because the jerk offs at the factory don't wire wheel the, the Loctite off of it and a steel bolt and an aluminum housing. That's a great design. Let's not put never seize on there. Just take the Loctite off so the next mechanic can get it out. So yeah, you just smash this in there and usually beating it in also breaks the rust free so it winds out real easy. Another tip for those, if you know a lot of cat heads, just uh, stick the torch in there, heat it up, burn the Loctite off, break the, the galvanic corrosion. Or if you're not afraid, take your small ball peen hammer, put the ball peen side on the, on the Torx head, and then take your large, numerous size hammers, probably your 56 ounce, and just whack shit out of that hammer. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses. They're not sunglasses, guys. When you're doing something stupid, they instantly become safety glasses because I said they are. OSHA doesn't care about this, and I don't care about OSHA. You just whack your hammer with another hammer because that's what you do. You want to strike tool steel with tool steel, and it shock loads the bolt free, and you just That's the sound it makes. Out. Nice and easy. All right, back to the truck tour. So we got some cooling adapters for your different cooling systems, your different thread on caps, so you can pressurize the cooling system or you can vacuum fill it, which means you can put a negative pressure inside your cooling system, i.e. a vacuum. You open the valve and it sucks all the coolant back into the system to displace all the air you've created inside of it. Making sure when you're done that job, you technically don't need to run the truck to check for leaks or to make sure it's purged of air because pulling the vacuum, if you leave it for a sit over you know, time, if there's no leaks in the system, your vacuum will hold at whatever you set it to, 15 PSI or 5 PSI. Or if you're feeling zesty, you can go to 25 PSI. But you open up the valve, you suck all your coolant back into the system. Works like a dream, done it numerous times. Nine times out of 10, you can just leave the job site until your customer phones on that 10th time he's pissed off because you should have ran it and it's low on coolant by about 12 liters because you spilt a bunch on the ground and thought you didn't. I mean, into a containment system, it never hit the ground because we're environmentally friendly and we care about the earth because we care. And then we got our large metric and standard tap and die sets that are amazing for tapping out undercarriages, except for John Deere decides to be a bunch of jagoffs and put M22 by 2.50 on their 470s, which M22 by 2.50 is not in the set. It goes M20, M22 by whatever the f other size is, and then M24. So you gotta go buy your own set, separate taps to put into your super awesome 12 point tapping sockets because we send things the right way with an impact. Electric, of course, because you can variable the speed. Safety. Diesel combustion pressure tester, f***ing bore thingy. Put it in there where your glow plug's supposed to be. Tells you the health of the cylinder if it holds, builds combustion pressure. Mint. And then, because me and my buddy broke an M22 by 2.50 tap off in an undercarriage and didn't have the large Walton tap extractor set. I've made a video about this on my TikTok channel. It's called the Nest Rethreader. Multiple different sizes, internal, external, tapping and chasing threads. Instead of buying the thread chasers, because everyone loves to say on my channel, oh, you shouldn't use a thread chaser, not a f***ing tapper. How about you f*** off? Why would you do this by hand when you got the 116 holes to do when you could be quicker and efficient and save your customer time and money? This is sick for when you decide to go blow up a tap in a hole and you got to chase it out because you no longer have a tap. So you put your thingy in there, you put your thingy on the thingy, and you widen the thingy out and it expands and makes it work. It's like science. And I didn't pass earth science in high school, so I can't explain the science. I'm not a scientist. But up next is the dial indicator. I'm hoping all you guys know how to use that. That's for measuring your standards, because I don't have very high standards. Mine are very small, so I read them in thousandths of an inch. That's why I need the dial indicator. And then I got my uh, large snap-on snap ring plier set because the first that I had, I think I left on the roof of the service truck and drove away from a job site and it fell off. And uh, it went on a journey and never came back. R.I.P. And then you just got to have some lights to lighten up your mood. Got to shed some light on the situation. The problem's not that bad, bro. And up top here, I got some wiring supplies and stuff and things and relays and relay holders and fuse holders and grease nipples because I'm a lube tech mostly. I just go around changing our grease nipples. Don't do much troubleshooting. That's why there's not many troubleshooting tools on the side of the truck. And then I got my short stubby drill bits for when I go and do something stupid and I drill something out. Uh, Deutsch connector kit. And then I got... Uh, Dowel pin polar set, weather pack crimper and set, thermal imager, and uh, borescope camera. Now we'll go into the top drawer, which is all my 
uh, ORFS caps, JIC caps, miscellaneous bull flange caps, and then lifting links and flange seal caps. Guys, these are awesome for if you're pulling off hoses to replace. So hose end, flange seal tool. Rip your hose end off, you slide it onto your flange seal tool or your flange seal tool on your hose end, you quickly crimp, run it down, done. Hose is no longer leaking on the ground, or sorry, into your containment device because we do care about the environment because we should. And then I got my really expensive cat lifting links because I was doing stuff that required me to have certified lifting links because they didn't like a bolt hooked up to a strap with a big washer. So I do everything properly and certified and safe because I care about my safety. Numerous different sizes, 9,000 pounds all the way down to, I think there's some 3,000 or 1,000 pounder ones in there that I used to pull out a 1,000 pound diff. So it was like, I nailed my rigging that day. All right, so in this drawer, I have my electrical connectors, heat shrink, stuff and things. It's kind of like everywhere. It's very well organized. I know where everything is after I find it. One thing I do keep on the truck a lot of that you'll go to a machine just to fix a leak. And you know it's in the bottom of the fuel bowl or the oil filter bowl on the um, 335 cats and under the next gen series not the next gen but like the f's and the e's those stupid canister filters or cartridge filters what do you call them have yeah, the plastic drains in the bottom i've gone to machines and it's leaking out of those too because the last mechanic didn't replace it or it got it's so old and brittle that it just broke i have the replacement ones on my truck somewhere i think they're on the other side and then adjustable heel bar so that's pretty good to have because it can move around. Some guys call them lady foot bar bars. The ladies I hang out with don't have that small dainty of a feet. And then I got my super awesome handy dandy trailer brake air valve releaser thingy. You hook this up to air and it releases your brakes so that you can then go crawl into the trailer and it runs, rolls over you. That way you don't have to work the next day. It's a win-win situation. You get a day off work and you don't have to worry about paying your bills no more because you're dead. So, um, I used to be a huge Mac supporter and guys, honestly, you'll understand why I was. When you put a 10 foot snipe on this and then use a 320 to push on it to bust 330 bottom roller bolts free. And all it does is bend the head and keeps the gear intact. That's quality. I've done it with this one and blown the head apart because the head, the shaft slides into the head cause you can run a shorter handle. I don't know why you would cause leverage is your best friend cause you want more leverage to break seize things free doesn't matter what you do to your tools to get the bolt out as long out is out the pile of carnage in the corner doesn't matter it's irrelevant boys the job got done so yeah i used to support mac because of like this it was impressive but the problem is when you have a field mechanic your dealers are hard to get hold of and work with and so on and so forth so i kind of supported one snap on guy because he supported me probably because he took my money and was happy about it but on the left side of the, the drawer pack, I had all my zap straps, big, small. And then on the right hand side is all my colored zip ties to tag my lines. So when I finally get back to that job, because I have time and it's been a month and a half, I know where the things got to go, but they're sun bleached and then you can't read them. So these work awesome if you're quick and not taking forever. Another little tip and trick. If you have letter stamps and punches, you can go and letter stamp and punch your cap and your plug. That way, if you're taking a bunch of hoses on a rotary manifold or a control valve or the base of a boom or whatever, you don't need to have colored zip ties. You don't need to worry about trying to take pictures and hopefully the hose memory retains where it's supposed to go. So you stamp this A, A, or double A or double A, so on and so forth, or dots, if that's what you want to do. So when you go to reassemble, you look at your hose, your cap, as long as if you didn't go and send the component out to get rebuilt in the machine shop or wherever puts the caps and plugs back in the same spot, but if you're re and re something yourself on site, you can then look at your cap and be like, oh, that's port number A self-marked. I'll grab hose A self-marked and put them on there. So there you go. You can not have to carry a bunch of colored zip ties around. You can use your hoses. Or, yeah, your caps and plugs. So before we move to the secret sauce cabinet, we're going to talk about the IMT Dreamcatcher 5005. 5005 means it's the 5005th rendition of my dream catchers. It's still not catching my dreams. We're going to move on to the next rendition. I got to get a new decal. All jokes aside, guys, that is for lifting 5,000 pounds of uh, awesomeness off of a service truck body with outriggers. Now, kids at home, when you're getting into this, put both your outriggers down all the way to the ground and fully out. 
or else you'll take out your rear suspension bushings like I did in six months. But yeah, lifting 5,000 pounds. The thing is a beast. Uh, the one positive of a, this thing is um, the winch cable doesn't have a limit switch. So it says 5,000, but is it? And if you want to get really zesty children at home, I don't recommend you do this because I've never done it. You can bypass your safeties. <laughs> so going into the crane cabinet, I have a waste oil recovery hose reel, waste oil recovery hose system, and a tank. So it actually goes into a containment system into the doghouse. It doesn't just pump into the ground. So anyways, then I have my hose reel for my one inch gun called Percival because it packs a punch. <laughs> Double P. But then I got all my lifting slings and chains and stuff and so on and so forth. Shackles and all that cool shit. And my little cable sling that I use for putting cutting edges on with my crane because I'm lazy. Guys, the whole point of a crane is to work smarter, not harder. There's an individual that told me years ago, I used a crane to put batteries in. And I went, you're lazy. And I don't care if it's over 50 pounds a lot of times and it's in an awkward spot. A lot of times I'll crane it. It's a smart man. This guy just said he needs to use a crane for his batteries. What a bitch. Use my cranes. It's a very smart man. I started using to put using my crane to put batteries in to my rod on lawnmower, the little small ones. He'd, TWC Mechanical, we care about the environment, so we use quick sucks to suck right out of the oil tank. It makes it so easy. You can do an oil change literally in 15 minutes because you don't have to worry about packing buckets. And like, wow, it's for the environment because we care no oil on the ground not only that it means you don't have to go into the machine lying in the mud and the dirt to take the belly pan off to get to the drain on because on the 320s they don't, don't put a hole through the fucking belly pan it's all mesh because they care about the mechanic so moving on we're going to go into the secret drawer guys snap on will tell you you shouldn't use a snipe on their tools you should be a responsible adult well i'm not responsible nor am i an adult but my age and my body say I am, but I have the maturity rating of a 12 year old. So I like to break things. Mr. Snipe, you throw that on there, you grab a 349 to push on it because you want to break roller bolts in a 135. You got to get something bigger that will guarantee to get those bolts out or break them. Out is out. Doesn't mean you have to fix it. So that's Mr. Snipe. That thing's a pile of shit. junk. My fat ass on it just folds over. That is the swing press. It's also called the track press. I beat pins out after I torch them out and cut the links and stuff and things. And then I have this thing for knocking pins out. It's got some weight to it. It's probably, I don't know, five, 10 pounds-ish. I'm really strong though, so it's probably like 125, but I make it look real easy. Taking out your quick change or your cylinders or stuff like that. You can use this to smash your pin through. Um, I bought a new one because the last one I had, I kind of pretzeled it because I smashed on it with a 470 because the stick nose pin was seized in a 336. But anyways, yeah, used to pound out pins. Works really good that way. Uh, one thing I didn't do when I first bought it is it was to a really sharp point. Yeah, it marked up that pin pretty good. Didn't even think about it. Just started smashing it. Looked at the pin and went, oh, that's not good. I'll flap a wheel that make it look good like I wasn't here. And then I ground the tip off, and but yeah, works mint. Now, one thing I learned after having my truck for a year and a half is putting the hand crank onto your jacks to get your outrigger down is kind of I should weld a nut or something to that. So I did. I welded a JSC cap onto it. Now I use an impact to lower my jacks down because I care about the customer's money. You gotta be quick and efficient. So that one's kind of starting to seize up. I should grease it. I haven't greased it in four years. So we're gonna go into the doghouse. Please ignore the mess. I finished up late last night and then proceeded to drink adult beverages. So I love buckets. I have a fetish with buckets. I always have at least eight buckets in the back of my service truck because I don't clean the mess out all the time, as you guys can tell. But anyways, I have my chains and for when I'm doing stuff or any chains and uh, come along. There's one on a customer's job that I left there. But honestly, guys, as a field mechanic, the come along is like a third hand or arm for you. They work slick. In the field, you don't bring a guy with you. You are the guy, the guys. Your crane is your second guy, and then you come along as your third and fourth, and you are MacGyvering stuff to make sure the job gets done. So that's why Cam Blue Tech has so much shit on his truck. Because you can go to a job, because you don't know what you're doing throughout the day as a contractor. 
you'll wake up in the day and be like, all right, cool. I'm going to go to Jim Bob's John Deere 420 backhoe, whatever the fuck. I don't work on backhoes, so that's a f***ing backhoe. Perfect. If not, you're going to work on a John Deere backhoe. Well, I'm going to pull the head off and put a new head on. Cool. I know what I need for that job. So you throw that stuff into the truck for that job. Well, on the way there, Jim Bob goes, hey, man, the backhoe's not a priority, but my Cat 320 has a hydraulic issue. It's weak on this circuit. Oh, okay, no problem, Jimbo. Hopefully I have the tools on board to do it. As a contractor, you pack the living out of your service truck to make sure that you can tackle any breakdown. Not a repair, breakdown throughout the day. Because you want to keep your customers happy, so you'll run around doing running repair. So you will put a godly amount of junk into your service truck to get the jobs done throughout the day. So that is through either rigging, tools, miscellaneous parts, you're gonna guess it. And if you work for a fleet, those mechanics know what are common failure points in that fleet. They'll, they'll, they'll you know, replace a lot of parts. So they'll put those parts, common failure items onto their truck to do easy running repair. Because when you can roll up on site, get that machine back up and running within half an hour of you being there because you had the gear on, on your truck to do it, you look like a rock star. When you roll up on site and go, uh, I need to go get a spark plug for the ARD head because I don't have any. I got to run from North Van to fucking Port Kells, back to North Van. That's like three and a half hours or four hours of travel, depending on how bad the day is. That machine's now down for pretty much the entire day. When you could have the $85 spark plug on the truck, which I do. So that's why you see I'm not as tooled up as Cam is in this department. This is mostly like literally just garbage. You throw your hopes and dreams in here to die. You gotta have your ladder because not a lot of places allow you to hang from your crane with your fall arrest harness, so you have to have a ladder to safely climb up to devices because hanging from the device on your crane is not safe. The fall arrest harness is rated for 600 pounds. Do I look like I'm 600 pounds? The crane's rated for 5,000. The ground is rated to have hundreds of thousands of tons rolling down across it. Why can't I do this? I'm safe, I have my safety reading. Well, you can die. Do I wanna live? Maybe, but at the time, I'm dealing with a shitty fucking troubleshooting problem. Did he see me? Oh, he seen me. How's it going, bud? Good. What do you it's not our damn paradise. Up top is my Lincoln 305 Ranger welder to weld myself to myself. From running my Miller to this thing, I prefer my Miller 325 Trailblazer a lot more. Miller made me look like a welder. The Lincoln is not as forgiving. It's, you stick to yourself a lot. So, and behind uh, door number gross is my oil cabinet. So I got my spill pads because I got to clean up my mess after I make a mess because we're all about the environment here at TWC Mechanical because we care. Some uh, coolant, engine oil, you know, in case you got to do a top up. So there's all like half liter full of jugs. Some power steering fluid and brake fluid because I drive a Ford. Got to have, got to cover yourself to get to the next, next job. Oh, I'm leaking a little bit, just top wrap, you know. Engine oil and the power steering system, you're good. Catch pants are doing draining finals into. Um, a very clean funnel for filling my engine oil up with. Some more catch pans for fuel filters and so on and so forth. In drawer number uno is all my filter wrenches, pliers, that to do oil changes, you know, because I'm a lube mechanic. Down below is a box of miscellaneous cat flange plugs and stuff. And then down below in the very bottom drawer is all the stuff I use to drain the oils out of John Deere's into containment devices because we care about the environment and never spill oil ever. Money maker cabinet because that's the one I use the most. That's why it's the furthest one away from the cat the truck because I like to walk a lot. Like I said, guys, everything is strategically placed because I'm fat and I need the exercise. And then above drawer number three are my welding cables on reels. So you pop the little lock thingy and you pull them out. I hated coiling those things up after a welding job where it's like, oh, it's just a five minute weld job. You want to just weld these uh, plates on or just tack this thing back on for me because I it and broke it off? Yeah, no problem, man. I'll do that for you. It's taking me 45 minutes to set up to do a quick five minute weld, but I'll do that. No problem. I build by the hour. All right, so back to what I see on the other side, the uh, manly pink streamers. Up top are the consumables that I carry. Sandpaper to abrasively remove my dignity because it's dumb. Loctite to glue it back on because that's what Loctite does is make things that shouldn't move, move. No, that's the backwards. Anyways, moving on. Paint, paint. My grease gun because I got tired of hand pumping everything so I had to go electric. My Milwaukee transfer pump because I got tired of hand pumping oils. You fast flow those in there to overfill the fuck everything. 
five liters in a swing trans? No, it's 18 because that's what the bucket holds. Because I was on the phone, not paying attention. Moving on. Now we got our O-rings, more O-rings, metric, standard, ORFS, cat flange, code 62, shims. And then the top here, I got scotch bright pads, sanding pads, clamps for all sorts and sizes. Sanding block, zip cut discs, flap discs, never seize because you're supposed to never seize things. Now, the little tip of never seize, if you guys didn't know this, uh, because you know when over time it gets all clumpy and dry and you can't smear it on yourself and you don't look like a tin man no more, you're not getting on the product, and yourself and your dogs at home that weren't even with you that day, if you dump some engine oil or ATF I've seen, a little scary because that paint, I think, into your uh, anti-seize and smear it around and mix it up together, it becomes thin and runny, so it applies a lot easier, so you can really become the tin man with a sheet metal. Saws all blades. For when you gotta cut stuff, because uh, I remember Lube Tech, I don't fix things, I just break them. Wire wheels, grinding discs, and then moving on down, we got the bolt bin. I got some Vesti clamps, some vice grip clamps to make things stick to things that I know will actually stick because I can weld. So if my welds aren't gonna work, I'll just give them a clamp. The vented cabinet. Because BC says you have to vent your torch cabinets. And when I got to site, I put my regulators on for the viewers at home so they can see what a service truck in action looks like. There's a lot of in here. Because I got an umbrella. Guys, if you haven't gotten one of these on your service truck yet, I would highly suggest getting one because when you're working up on top of the engine, it's kind of hot up there. Because... You're gonna take a DPF off of a machine because it just regen and now you gotta work with it hot and it's hot out and it's 43 degrees Celsius, not bald eagle Fahrenheit. You got an umbrella to make yourself look cool with your Milwaukee fan to make yourself not as so hot. So hide from the heat and stay cool, get yourself an umbrella. And in BC where it rains 12 months the f year, you hide from the rain too. And I also learned that we're currently having a settling shortage. So I had to run this map gas shit called chem fuel. Apparently you cannot run acetylene through, or propane, through the same hoses as your acetylene gases, so I had to go buy new hoses. Which was cool. More money to spend. So, I got my chem fuel tank and my two oxygen tanks because I don't know how to run a torch properly and I burn through a lot of oxygen. Because I'm productive. My regulars, like I said, I mounted them for the viewers at home so you can see what a service truck is in action is. They're not dusty because they've been on there a long time. They're dusty because they hang on the cabinet a lot. Two of my customers did a ton of excavation work. So I bought a backpack, fired all my tools into it, go down the hole, fix that 470 that you think is a blown alternator, but just toss the belt off because the belt broke because maintenance is number one in this world. My new welding helmet that I haven't even used yet because I weld so much. My welding respirator, as you can see, is used every day. That's, that's dust from the job site, not from sitting in here driving down the road. And then I got my miscellaneous drill bits, reams, taps, and dies that don't go in a kit in my miscellaneous drill bits, taps, dies, and reams box. Bought off Amazon, $9.99. It broke the first time I used it. And then down below yonder, because I am organized to a T, everything is where it's supposed to be. And when I find it, it's the last place to look because I found it. Don't have to look anymore. It's all my torches and welding and supply thingy. And my gouger, for one, I decide to play welder and really want to light myself on fire. Very never used welding blanket because I protect the customer's machine a lot. Is sitting there too. As well as my very well, and I'm not you, used fall arrest harness, fall harness, fall, fall restraint harness, that's the word. Um, I'm not joking. You guys have seen the videos on TikTok. I use the harness and the crane jointly together a lot. And then behind the umbrella is my inch and a quarter pulling rod for when I pull bushings in. I guess you want to see that, eh? It's pretty big. It's pretty beefy. It's the second rod I had to buy because the first one I was using a homemade plate. Yeah, you can see I used it on this one too. It kind of mangled the threads in some spots that needed the nuts to run through. And at the time I didn't have the nest and I didn't have a way to chase it and I didn't feel like run the die grinder through it. Oh, and my raincoat jacket thingy because it rains 12 months of the year in BC that I wear all the time. But one thing that I don't have in here right now, it's in the doghouse, because that's a good place for it to be, 
is I have a duffel bag of spare clothes because it rains 12 months of the year in BC. So I have a spare change of coveralls and a spare change of clothes always in the truck because I don't like being wet. I will go into a go, go John or into the doghouse, or I've actually kicked a supervisor out of a site trailer to go and get changed because I told him, this is either happening with you or without you, you might want to leave. So I've changed my clothes midway through the day because I don't want to be wet anymore. And this is Sierra. She's my emotional support dog. So that is the torching cabinet. And then we'll go above. And the reason why that filter is so rusty, it's not because it's old. It's because I drive into so many trees because I work in spots that the tree branches have knocked the paint off. Believe it or not, there's only a hundred hours in that compressor. That's how much I use it. That's how much I work. I work lots and I work hard. I'm too lazy to climb up there to start the thing. So that's why it's either hand tools or when I really, really need it. Cause like I, I pull the ladder out or climb up into the cabinet and then hang off and try to choke it and start it and whisper sweet nothings in its ear and spit on it and hopefully it gets turned on. Moving on to the last cabinet and surprise is also kind of expensive and kind of not at the same time. Um, up top here, because I drive a Ford, is my scan tool, automotive. Doesn't plug into equipment, plugs into Fords because it's reliable. Ford, built tough, found on road dead, daily. And then below it, because I drive a Ford, is the brand new Snap-on ball joint press I bought the other day because I drive a Ford and the ball joints are getting worn out and I have to replace those. So not only do I play heavy equipment mechanic, I play automotive tech some days too. I hate my life. So, and below that, is the speed tapping accessory kit, the small taps I never use. So that's the tap and die set. And then because we all are about safety at TWC, I have a first aid kit. I lose strikers like a bastard, so I carry a few dozen spares. I'll literally lose three in one day. I'm that good. Numerous welding gloves because I will actually light a pair of gloves on fire on myself while doing a job. So they'll be kind of trashed when I'm not even done the job. So I have to have a few spares because I'm that good. I have numerous stories about lighting myself on fire, intentionally and unintentionally. I'm not joking, guys. I took the torch head and did this. And went, Jesus Christ, my leg is hot. But moving on to the next thing, shelf, device, is my NOCO 1224 volt booster. It actually does work very well for boosting dead equipment and dead service trucks, three times in one week. Oops. So yeah, you can change it from 12 to 24 volt. We'll only charge on 12 volt to the truck. You have to move it back or else it won't charge. Um, I learned the hard way that these units do not like to be constantly plugged in. You actually have to let them die, then charge them up and let them die, then charge them up. A constant charge will kill your $5,000 boost kit. I have my batteries for my digital vibrating torque wrenches because it feels good in your hand. Power Pro for years and years and years, never used these things because like, I'm like, I can troubleshoot the circuit without it. It is pretty handy sometimes, but I don't use it enough to actually be on the truck. I put it on the truck for one job and then because I'm so organized, I forgot to take it off. And then my DEF refractometer for uh, measuring your death quality and purities and stuff. Well, and the coolant refractometer. That one's really weird because it says you can put battery acid on it too, but a refractometer you put to your eye and then look up into the sun. Battery acid will make you go blind. Um, so anyways, <laughs> moving on, I got some uh, quarter inch torque wrenches, uh, probably three of them. One's digital, one's a manual click style. And the reason why I have two manual click styles is one has a three eighths head. I can dig it out and show you guys here in a second, but the torque wrenches are different. You can go lower with the one and higher with the other. The reason why I got the 3 8 one is I got so tired of having to, well, that's the digital one. That's pretty neat. So this is neat. Really tiny buttons, big fat fingers. I got to get a screwdriver to work my torque wrench because I push the on, up arrow and push the off button at the same time. Yeah, so this is the 3 8 head one. So instead of trying to carry two different size sockets when you're doing small engine work, you can run just the 3 8 torque wrench. And then I got some quarter inch snap-on torque quick screwdrivers. So for really fine things like, you know, when you want to see how high your dignity can go or low it can go, inch pounds. And it just clicks, snaps over, cams over center. So moving on, my pump for my cylinder, 
This pump you can also rig up to uh, put into a hydraulic system to work your spool to recover a dead machine. By chance, we had a 470 recently blow up. The pump's grenaded. Gouging rod, some welding rod, the sawzall. Snap-on grinder. There's a video on TikTok of my first time using it. That first time use when the wire wheel caught my coveralls and bound itself up, I'm pretty sure I got sent it up for a rebuild now because it doesn't really work so good. It's kind of uh, Milwaukee grinder, Milwaukee die grinders. These things are sick, guys, for about five, 10 minutes and then They're not meant for heavy use. So, and they're like 150 bucks. So I'll buy it, fry it and go buy another one. And I got tired of doing that. So I went and bought the $500 snap-on die grinder thinking it would be better. Yeah, it's not. This one gets quick. It's been rebuilt three times. And then I got my big Milwaukee or Melkita six inch die grinder that I used to run eight inch grinding discs on for facing stick noses because I was a manual machinist. Weld it up, send it smooth. And then the Milwaukee whole hog, it's a half inch drill. It does the job nice because you can really kick it to a low gear reduction to run a big drill bit on. It is nice, but it leaves a lot to be desired. You think it's gonna be more, but it's not. Uh, this is a must on any service truck. You gotta keep your adult beverages cool throughout the day because no one likes drinking warm adult beverages at the end of the day, so. And then behind it is my press kit. The reason why I suggest people get these made up because when you're pulling in your bushing on a lot of stick noses, there's not a shoulder for your bushing to stop against on the inside. So when you're pulling it in, you have to stop at a certain depth for your wiper seal or your grease seal, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if you can see it on the camera very well, but this machine groove here right up the edge, about an eighth of an inch in, that's your depth right from here to here for your wiper seal. So when you're pulling your bushing in, if you see this just disappear, you stop and that's your set depth. On some of the John Deere's at the 470s, there's a big shoulder in there. You can only pull it so far and it stops. A lot of the cats they use in their stick noses a cavity fed grease system. So you pump grease into the big center part of the, cat, the, the stick nose and it kind of essentially builds a bit of hydraulic pressure through grease and then works itself over to the bushings. So there's not a direct grease point in your stick nose to grease that way. On your 470s, you have direct um, injection ports. So you have to stop your bushing at a certain depth. If you go too far, you block off the port and you'll not get grease to it. So that's why you got to really pay attention to stuff like that when you're pulling stuff in. It's not just mindless jobs where you can just, anybody can go do it. If you don't know what you're doing, you can pull the bushing in too far and drop it into the center, then you're going to be f***ing it out. You're going to torch it out or gouge it out or whatever you want to do. But this takes the guesswork out of it. If you get your machinist, you take them the grease seal when he's making these, be like, hey man, I want you to recess a machine a groove or a recess into my plate. That way I can see it and I can just stop and you're good to go. And then I have uh, these two kits here are for hydraulic testing and adjusting. The right one is lines and gauges from uh, 50 PSI up all the way up to 10,000 PSI. I work in a variety of different air systems where it's like 150 PSI is max on the trucks, all the way up to hydraulic systems on the machine where it's five, 6,000 PSI. And because I'm a welder, I have various different size welding rods because I can glue myself to myself. I think that's it for that cabinet. And then, all my fancy expensive stuff, my scan tools and my half inch, three quarter, three eighths di digital torque wrench are all sitting in the front seat. I'd show you it, but it's a bit of a mess up there because I'm going riding afterwards. So I've got clothes piled on top of all that stuff with my breakfast and my Red Bulls. But it's all in the front seat where it's always gonna be dry. Yeah, guys, that's all I can really think of. If there's anything you wanna see more specific, you're more than welcome to reach out to the channel and they can have me come back and I'll probably use better, fancier words and sound smarter. I won't be so hung over to give you a better, more in-depth tool tour. But anyways, guys, like I said, my name is Tyler Crawford. I'm the owner and CEO and janitor of TWC Mechanical, and this is my tool truck tour. Certain mechanics truck tour, service truck tour. Big words that I can't comprehend today. That's who I am. I really don't give a flying f what people think of me because at the end of the day, I am who I am. Well, y'all have a great day. And remember, God loves you, boys, because I sure as f don't. See ya. Join our network. Come along with me. Let's go. Get in the fucking truck.